All right, everyone, it's debunking time. The Parag Agrawal story that over half a dozen people have sent me as a news tip. To be clear, that's not real. Um, while it is feasible, you know, the old Twitter guard seemed to have some strange beliefs with regards to small children. We'll put it that way. So as not to run afoul of defamatory claims. Um, to be clear, this particular news story that the FBI has detained Parag Agrawal, former head of Twitter for illicit child imagery, uh, that's not real. Uh, that comes originally from a satire site and is now spreading around uh, to other news sources, some of which are semi-reliable, but apparently they took the bait. And, and that's the whole point. What I see with this is an, a carefully astroturfed attempt. I think that there are two things that they're trying to do. Number one, and probably with government involvement, we know that they tinker around on the internet all the time trying to spread false narratives and disinformation. You know, the actual state disinfo comes mainly from the CIA, it seems. Um, we know that they do this. Is it beyond the pale to suggest that they're trying to distract people from the Twitter files releases by deliberately algorithmically hijacking terms like Twitter, Twitter files, Twittergate? And even the former head, Agrawal himself, by astroturfing a satire story as though it was real. I mean, it seems well designed enough. Who registered this site, by the way? Are we going to find that it was registered in an empty office building a couple years ago in Washington, D.C. or someplace like that? Oh, it was registered at Area 51? <laughs> what a coincidence. The aliens must have done it. Yeah, there are a million examples about this happening, by the way. You have a scandal. You have, you have something that's inconvenient for the government at large, an administration, a government agency, and so you try to distract people. If you can no longer feasibly cover it up because too, people, too many people know what's going on, you create a story that sounds even more juicy, and it's like shaking tinsel to a cat. The cat suddenly is distracted and no longer wants to poke at your dinner. Uh, they're distracted by the tinsel because it's shiny. It's something exciting, a little laser dot or something. You can do this with animals. Humans are animals. They act the same goddamn way, and 90% of people don't even know that this occurs to them on a regular basis. This happens with wars. Oh, you accidentally uh, massacred a village full of people because the soldiers got a hold of some drugs that they shouldn't have gotten a hold of. It's a war crime. Uh, whoops, uh, shit. People are talking about this massacre. Wow, what can we do to distract them? Oh, here's a story about how strange lights were seen in the sky the other day near the battle zone, and somebody thought Jesus was talking to them. Something religious. Religion can play a role. Anything involving children. So let's say that you massacred a bunch of villagers. Instead, get the legacy media and the public to focus on a couple of kids that got blown up by a landmine by the enemy. They will focus on that because it involves kids. Kids and, and, and any harm to animals, things like that, and also deep conspiracy. So anything involving the government uh, does the occult, uh, the government uh, talks to aliens, stuff like that. 9-11 is a great example of this. Now, plausible theories of foul play that day aside, there are some theories that simply do not make any sense, never did, and have been completely discredited. For example, on 9-11, the American public began to be deeply lied to. The official report redacted Saudi involvement. That's lie number one. It was used for spaces purposes to invade Iraq, which had nothing to do with 9-11 several years later. Lie number two, total warmongering bullshit. Um, people were lied to about the contamination of the entire area, health effects. They're still doing that to an extent, by the way, this day. Uh, now, 20 years later, they're still fucking doing it. The American people have been lied to about the circumstances surrounding 9-11 the whole time. In order to distract from the fact that the government was lying about who done it and why and who else was involved and the impact of this, they lied flat out. They, in most cases, knew that they were lying. They arguably committed treason on multiple levels. That's a big scandal. What's more exciting than that? Oh, well, uh, controlled demolitions specifically by nuclear weapons in the basement of, of the World Trade Center. Now, I would think that radiation detection equipment probably would have picked that up. But it sounds juicy. Wow, they nuked the goddamn World Trade Center in order to, to justify the invasion of Iraq, and I mean, invasion of Afghanistan, and several years later, the invasion of Iraq. Well, no, they didn't. They did not nuke the basements of the World Trade Center. 
You've got to be stupid to think so. Literally no evidence lines up to suggest that would happen. Even if you believed in planted charges, the idea of doing it with a nuclear weapon is so far beyond the pale, lacks evidence on such a, a basic level that only a complete moron would take the concept seriously. But people who aren't morons still talked about the story because it was juicy. And once people started talking about it and fighting about it, it also gives those same glowing agents the ability to call people shills if they don't believe the tinsel story. The shiny story must be believed. It's, it's sacrosanct. If you don't, then you're a government bootlicker. You see how this works? That's what they're doing with the Parag Agrawal story. Again, regardless of whether its origins glow in the dark, the spread of it does glow in the dark. And I note that several of the people that tip me off this story are recently made accounts that do not actually follow me on Twitter. Very interesting how that works. It's funny how they know of me as a commentator. I'm sure that they've sent it off to many others too to try to get the story going. Quartering and others calling it out, by the way, as well. We're not taken in so easily. You know, most of us do have some credibility when it comes to fact-checking. If you want someone to take a story seriously without checking the facts, send it to CNN or NPR or something. The second, and I think this is basically, like, this is their golden goose. They're probably not going to catch it, but this is what they really want. What they really want is for Elon Musk, who does not personally like Agrawal, you can tell that there is a genuine animosity between them, to retweet the goddamn story, to think that it's real. Make it look real, spread it around, and hope Elon sees it, or someone adjacent to Elon. Hope that somebody at the higher up level, we can destroy content creators if they share it out. We say they didn't fact check, so they're unreliable. They should be sued for defamation for retweeting something. There are efforts to do things like that, by the way. They would love to make it impossible to report the news. They would love to make it impossible to do what I'm doing right now. Unless you happen to just be repeating what you see on CNN or something like that. So you heard it from me first. This story is not real. Although, I mean, Agrawal could be a nonce or something, but there's no evidence. He didn't get detained, so the story centrally is the premise is false. It could come true, although the, the idea that the FBI is going to breathe down the neck of somebody like Agrawal who was helping him so much, that should have been your main tip-off that the story was fake. Once I read that, I'm like, oh, I, I deeply question whether this is true. And I'm hoping, of course, that it's not, because you know, I don't want to find out that Agarwal is dicking 10-year-olds or something, because I don't want that to happen. Uh, there are some people that are acting gleeful. They're like, oh, I wish it were true. That, that's not a good look either. That probably plays into the hands of the astroturfers. The very least, just saying. Um, the, the story is not true, and it is being astroturfed. Not everyone who sends it to you or talks about it is glowing in the dark. Some of them, I assure you, fucking are. That's about all. Hmm. Peace out.